Hello and welcome to this video lesson on the National Pride Biology topic, Photosynthesis. We're still on Unit 3, Life on Earth, and this is Key Area 3. Once again, here's the SQA course specification or managed knowledge section for this topic. Remember, this is all the bits of knowledge and content that you could be tested on in a test or exam at this level for this topic. Again, this may look like a short topic, but there are quite a lot of new stages and terms. As usual, as we go through the theory for each section, there will be some questions after each part so that you can be sure you're ready to move on. So our learning intention for this part is to learn about photosynthesis. And hopefully by the end of this lesson, you'll be able to state the word summary for photosynthesis, describe the two stages of photosynthesis, including their raw materials and products, describe the fates of sugar in a plant, and analyse limiting factor graphs. So the first thing we're going to look at um, is the stages of photosynthesis. So photosynthesis can be summarised by using a word summary like this. So this shows the raw materials, which are carbon dioxide and water, light energy, which always is found above the arrow, and then sugar and oxygen are the products. Photosynthesis can be split up into two stages. There's the light reactions and carbon fixation, and we're going to talk about both of these individually. So before we move on, let's try a couple of quick questions on what we've covered so far. So pause the video here and try the questions either by saying them out loud or writing them down, and press play again when you're ready to go through the answers. So the first question asks you to give the full word summary for photosynthesis. So you should have your products, so carbon dioxide and water, light energy above the arrow, and sugar and oxygen as the products. Naming the two stages in photosynthesis, you should have named the light reactions and carbon fixation. Okay, so this diagram here shows you everything you need to know about the light reactions. So if you learn this diagram off by heart, you'll be able to answer any type of question on the light reactions of photosynthesis, um, and you'll also be able to answer any extended response questions. So during the light reactions, light energy from the sun is trapped by chlorophyll inside the chloroplast. This light energy is then converted into chemical energy, and that chemical energy is used to generate ATP. The chemical energy is also used to split water into its two component parts, so oxygen and hydrogen. Oxygen diffuses out of the cell, whereas hydrogen, along with the ATP that was made from the chemical energy, is passed to stage two. So going through that one more time, Light energy from the sun is trapped by chlorophyll, which is a pigment within the chloroplast in a plant cell. The light energy is then converted into chemical energy, and that chemical energy is used to generate ATP, the molecule we talked about when we did respiration. The chemical energy is also used to split water into hydrogen and oxygen. The hydrogen, along with the ATP, are passed to stage two, whereas the oxygen diffuses out of the cell as it was one of our products, which we can see here. Now, just quickly, I want to go over the difference between chlorophyll and the chloroplast, because a lot of people get these two mixed up in their answers. So light energy from the sun is captured by chlorophyll, which is a green pigment, and that's why plant cells are green. That chlorophyll, that pigment, is found within the chloroplast, which is the cell structure. So when we did plant cells back in Kiria 1 of Unit 1, and you were asked to label a plant cell, you would label the chloroplast. Within the chloroplast is the chlorophyll, which is a pigment which traps the light energy from the sun. So after stage one, this is how our summary looks. So we've already talked about water being split. We talked about light energy from the sun being converted into chemical energy. And we've spoken about how oxygen is produced and diffuses out of the cell. So we still need to talk about carbon dioxide and sugar, which um, takes us on to stage two. Before we move on to stage two, let's try some quick questions about stage one to check our knowledge before we move on. So pause the video here and try these questions, either by saying the answer out loud or writing them down. And when you're ready, play the video and we'll go through the answers. Okay, so question number one asks you to name the first stage of photosynthesis. That would be the light reactions. 
Number two asks you to describe the role of chlorophyll in photosynthesis. It traps light energy from the sun. Number three asks you to state the location of chlorophyll in a plant cell, and that is within the chloroplasts. Number four asks you to name the form of energy um, the light energy is converted into during the reactions, the light reactions, and this is chemical energy. Number five asks you to name the molecule this energy is used to generate, and that is ATP. Number six asks you when water is split, it creates two products, name both of those products, and that would be hydrogen and oxygen. Just think about H2O when you think about water, so hydrogen and oxygen. Describe the fate of oxygen for number seven, so it diffuses from the cell. And number eight asks you to name the two products produced during the light reactions which are required for the second stage of photosynthesis. Those were the ones that were in red boxes on my diagram, so ATP and hydrogen. Okay, so moving on to stage two. So stage two looks quite different from stage one in that stage two is a cycle. Now carbon fixation involves a series of enzyme controlled reactions. So there's multiple reactions here within this cycle. You don't need to know at national five level what these are, but you need to know that there's a series of them and they are all enzyme controlled. And we'll come back to why that's important later. Now what you can see here is in this series of enzyme controlled reactions, ATP and hydrogen are both used, which were produced in the first stage in the light reactions. Carbon dioxide is also used in this stage as well, which is taken from the air. And if hydrogen, ATP and carbon dioxide are combined through a series of enzyme controlled reactions, they produce sugar. Now it's really important that you use the word sugar here and you don't use the word glucose and we'll come back to glucose in a second. So after stage two, you can see that we've actually managed to now mention all of our parts of our word summary. That's really important. And if you're doing an extended response question on photosynthesis, I would highly suggest writing out the summary so that you can tick off each of these as you go to make sure you've covered them all. OK, so what happens to sugar? So the sugar that's produced by photosynthesis can be used in three different ways. The chemical energy that is stored in the sugar can be used for respiration. So we talked about respiration way back when we did unit one, um, and we know that respiration uses glucose. So glucose could be used for respiration. The sugar could also be converted into starch, which is a storage carbohydrate. So that's what the plants store their sugar as, so starch. Sugar can also be converted into cellulose, which is a structural carbohydrate. Now we talked about cellulose before because it's the component that makes up the plant cell walls. So essentially sugar carbohydrates, being it glucose, starch or cellulose, can be used for three different functions, respiration, storage and structure, but you need to know which one goes with which. Okay, so let's try another quick set of questions on what we've covered so far before we move on. So once again, pause the video here and try these questions either by saying the answer out loud or writing them down. And when you're ready, play the video and we'll go through the answers. So question one asks you to name the second stage of photosynthesis. That's carbon fixation. Number two asks you to name the three raw materials of the second stage of photosynthesis and where they came from. So hydrogen and ATP came from stage one or the light reactions and carbon dioxide would just come from the air. Number three asks you to state the name of the product of stage two and that is sugar. Number three asks you to explain why photosynthesis cannot occur at very high temperatures. So this is a two mark question. So first of all, you need to get the idea that carbon fixation or photosynthesis is enzyme controlled. So remember we talked about how that cycle in carbon fixation is a series of enzyme controlled reactions. So enzymes are involved, so that's the first mark. And the second mark is for saying at very high temperatures, enzymes would denature. So this is why photosynthesis can't occur at high temperatures because it is controlled by enzymes and enzymes denature at very high temperatures. The next question asks you to use this diagram to name substances one, two and three. 
So substance one, first of all, is coming into the carbon fixation cycle along with carbon dioxide and ATP. So this must be hydrogen. Then we have our series of enzyme controlled reactions which produce sugar and this sugar can be converted into two things, a structural carbohydrate and a storage carbohydrate. So our structural carbohydrate for number two is cellulose and our storage carbohydrate for number three is starch. Okay, now that we've done the stages of photosynthesis, we're going to move on and look at limiting factors. So a limiting factor is any factor which limits the rate of photosynthesis when it is in short supply. There are three limiting factors within photosynthesis. These are temperature, light intensity, and carbon dioxide concentration. It's really important that you don't just say light and carbon dioxide. It needs to be light intensity and carbon dioxide concentration. So now we're going to discuss the rate of photosynthesis. So a rate um, is basically how quick something happens so over time. This is always found on the y-axis of a limiting factor graph. Rates of photosynthesis can be measured in lots of different ways through experiments. So you could either measure the volume of oxygen released over time. So you could count the number of bubbles that were produced if you had um, a plant pond weed like Elodea um, underwater. You could count how many bubbles were released and divide it by the time and that would give you the rate of photosynthesis. The quicker the number of bubbles were produced, the higher the rate of photosynthesis. Another thing you could do is you could measure the change in mass of the plant because as the plant releases oxygen and uses up water, um, its mass will change. So you could do that as well to measure the rate of photosynthesis. So experiments can be conducted to investigate the effect of limiting factors, so those that are in short supply, on the rate of photosynthesis. And the results can be presented in what we call limiting factor graphs, and you need to be able to analyse these. So here's an example of a limiting factor um, as a graph. So this is temperature. So up this side, we have rate of photosynthesis, which always goes up the y-axis. And on the x-axis, we have temperature. Now, you've seen a graph very like this before when we talked about enzymes. So temperature affects the rate of photosynthesis in quite a different manner to the other two um, limiting factors. So basically here, carbon fixation, remember, is a series of enzyme-controlled reactions. Therefore, photosynthesis is heavily temperature dependent. As the temperature increases, so does the rate of photosynthesis until optimum temperatures reach. After which the rate of photosynthesis will then decrease as the high temperature basically brings the rate of reaction down and then eventually the enzymes will denature at a very high temperature. So with this graph, you'll see the temperature goes up, reaches the optimum, and then it goes down, um, and as the temperature increases, the rate of photosynthesis increases till the optimum, and then decreases until at very high temperatures it'll denature. However, light intensity and carbon dioxide concentration look quite different in terms of their graph. So essentially, both light intensity and carbon dioxide concentration affect the rate of photosynthesis in a similar manner. So as either factor is increased along the bottom, the rate of photosynthesis will also increase until a certain point. So you can see here that as the light intensity goes up, the rate of photosynthesis also goes up until we get to here, and then what will happen is it will level out. What this means when it starts to remain constant is that another factor has become the limiting factor. So the easy way to spot from a limiting factor graph which factor is a limiting factor is at any point where there is a steep gradient, the limiting factor is whatever is on the x-axis. So at this point, the limiting factor is light intensity, whereas when it becomes constant, it needs to be one of my other two factors. So what I would suggest doing is beside any limiting factor graph, write your three so light intensity, temperature, carbon dioxide concentration. So at point, this point over here, it's light intensity because there's a gradient, so it means it's whatever's on the x-axis. So light intensity here is the limiting factor because as we increase it, the rate will actually go up. So it means that the light intensity was what was holding it back at this point. However, when we get up here, no matter how much we increase the light intensity, the rate of photosynthesis stays the same. So this means that another factor has become limiting. Now, if it's not light intensity, it means it must be temperature or carbon dioxide concentration. You can see the same thing here for the graph of carbon dioxide concentration. 
So rate of photosynthesis again goes up the side and carbon dioxide concentration increases along the bottom. If I was asked at this point here, what was the limiting factor, it would be carbon dioxide concentration because, because there's a gradient, I know that it's the whatever's on the X axis. That's the quick way of working it out. At this point here, even if I keep increasing the carbon dioxide concentration, the rate of photosynthesis stays the same, so it must be another factor that's become limiting. So that would be either light intensity or temperature. Okay, so we're gonna try some questions together so I can show you how this works. So the first question here is what is the limiting factor at this point here? So as I said, if it's going up and there's a gradient, then it's whatever's on the X axis, and in this case, that is light intensity. When it starts to level off, so at point two, it's asking what the limiting factor is. Now we can't tell, we know that it's not light intensity because if I'm increasing light intensity here, this is still staying the same. So it must be one of my other two factors. So it has to be carbon dioxide concentration or temperature. I can't tell which at this point from this graph. For this one, what is the limiting factor at point one? Well, that's carbon dioxide concentration. At point two, it's going to be one of my other two factors, so light intensity or temperature. In this example here, the limiting factor at this point is going to be temperature. The limiting factor at number two is not actually going to be either of my other two. My limiting factor here is the fact that enzymes have denatured. Okay, let's try this question. This is a wee bit different. So we've got light intensity going along here and rate of photosynthesis going up the side. At point one, again, my limiting factor will be light intensity. Now at point two, we can see that something is limiting the rate of reaction here, but something else will allow it to actually go higher. Now we don't have any more information. So for number two at the moment, all I can say is that it must be temperature or carbon dioxide concentration because it's not light intensity. As I increase the light intensity, this stays the same. Now with this little bit of extra information, I can actually tell you what the limiting factor is. So this is how they make it a little bit more difficult for these types of graphs. So what we now know is that this line is 0.04% carbon dioxide concentration, and this one is 0.4 carbon dioxide concentration. So this higher carbon dioxide concentration allows the rate of photosynthesis to increase. So at this point here at number two, it's carbon dioxide concentration that was the limiting factor. So at one, it was light intensity. At two, it was carbon dioxide concentration. If I'd put a three up here and there's nothing above it, then basically at this point, it could still be carbon dioxide concentration that's limiting it, or it could be temperature because we haven't got anything about temperature here. Okay, so here's some more quick questions on what we've just covered. So please pause the video here and try the questions either by saying them out loud or writing them down. And when you're ready, play the video and we'll go through the answers. So the first question was, what is a limiting factor? So a limiting factor is any factor which limits the rate of photosynthesis when it's in short supply. Number two asks you to give the three examples of limiting factors in photosynthesis. They are temperature, light intensity and carbon dioxide concentration. Question three asks you to name the factor or factors that are limiting photosynthesis at point one. So at point one here, we can see that it's got a gradient. So we just look at the x-axis and our answer is carbon dioxide concentration. Name the factor or factors limiting photosynthesis at point two. Well, at this point here, we know it's not carbon dioxide concentration because as we increase it, this stays at the constant rate. But we can see the difference between this line and this line is temperature. So it's the temperature that's limiting at this point. Okay, so that is us finished learning about photosynthesis. I hope you are now confident about stating the word summary for photosynthesis, describing the two stages of photosynthesis, including their raw materials and their products. I hope you can describe the fates of sugar in a plant, and I hope you're now confident at analysing limiting factors graphs. This was, again, quite a difficult topic with a lot of new information, so please feel free to go back and watch parts of this video again in the future if you need a refresher on any of the parts of photosynthesis. Thank you for listening.